Don't forget your umbrella or your rain jacket. You're watching Vaga Brothers. And this is Sri Lanka. I'm Alex. I'm Marco. And we're the Vaga Brothers. Brothers, vagabonds, and your go-to guides for travel tips, inspiration, and vlogs on YouTube. In this series, we're discovering the best of Sri Lanka. Ancient cities, stunning nature, rich culture, and delicious food. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Vaga Brothers. I'm Alex. I'm Marco. And today is another beautiful day exploring Sri Lanka. What do we have on the schedule? Well, right now we're at the beautiful Amaya Lake Hotel. We've been up here exploring the cultural triangle for the last couple days. Today we're going to Kandy, the cultural heart of Sri Lanka. And on the way, we're gonna make some really cool stops. Our bus is leaving right now. Come with us. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, to start things off today, we are going to learn a little bit about the relationship that Sri Lanka has with spices. It's got an incredible climate, this jungle climate that is actually the homeland of many of the world's most precious spices, including cinnamon. Sri Lanka actually is the exporter of over 90% of the world's cinnamon, and it's where cinnamon comes from. So to learn a little bit more about Sri Lanka and its relationship to the spice trade, we've come to Runwelly 99 Spice Garden, and we're gonna get a tour to learn more about the spices. So this is vanilla, vanilla pure extract. vanilla pure extract, vanilla extract okay. which comes from the vanilla plant leaf. from the leaf right here. And wow. You know tiger balm you people yeah. use? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Menthol. Right. But this is no menthol. Cardamom, clove, ginger, cinnamon, wow. coriander, coconut together. Wow. Herbal paste. Huh? For pain. Stand. Yes. To use, huh? I show how to yes. use little cream, little cream. Ooh. Is this is uh, no oh. menthol, eh? <laughs> oh my god. You have uh, magical hands. <laughs> it's so crazy how pepper, something that we have on our dinner tables every single night, is actually an import for most of the Western world. Europe really only had the onion and garlic native to the continent, and everything else was imported. That's nutmeg? Nutmeg. This is cinnamon. It grows as a bark on a tree that's native to here in Sri Lanka. It's been popular since ancient times. The ancient Egyptians used it in the embalming process, it was later an aphrodisiac, and the Romans were obsessed. But nobody in the West knew where it came from. That is except for the Arabs, who arrived here in the seventh century, set up trading posts, and monopolized the trade by bringing it by sea to Europe. In order to throw Europeans off the scent of where it came from, they made up tall tales, including one that they said that it came from mythically large birds that use it to build their nests. And the only way to get this down from their nests was by putting a big chunk of ox meat at the bottom. The birds would pick it up, put it in their nests, the nests would fall down, and the Arabs would collect the cinnamon. That, of course, was false. But it was tall tales like that that allowed the Arabs to maintain a monopoly on the cinnamon trade for centuries. That is, until the Portuguese found a way to get here by sea. The 
Portuguese outmaneuvered the Arabs by sailing around the tip of Africa to arrive in Sri Lanka, but they in turn were outmaneuvered by the Dutch and then the British. The one thing all of these colonizers shared in common was that they exported almost everything imaginable back to Europe and made a fortune in the process. Wild indigo, cardamom, ginger, sandalwood, mustard oil, ivory, coral, and seven different types of cinnamon. And in the process, they conquered almost the entire island. That is, except for the Kingdom of Kandy. Thank you. It's duty. Now we've kind of finished our tour of the Spice Garden and we're having a little demonstration. They're cooking some okra with a lot of different uh, spices that we just learned about. But first things first, having a little bit of tea. Uh, it's ginger tea. It's got some cinnamon in there, some cardamom, uh, some cloves. Really, really tasty, really good for you. It's good for your throat. As someone who loves cooking and who loves knowing where their food comes from, this is an incredible experience because if you ever try to cook curry, at the very best you can just usually buy curry powder, which itself is a combination of about five different spices. So it's really cool to come here and see all those component spices that make up curry powder and then to make a curry from it. It's actually quite tasty um, and it just gives you a little bit more perspective of where that flavor comes from. That's good. So right now we are inside the store. We're checking out all of the Ayurvedic uh, treatments that they have, all the different tonics. Uh, this one's perfect uh, for living in uh, our modern Western world where FOMO dominates and where there's just too much stuff to do and not enough time. This is the tonic for nervous breakdown. So uh, like we've said, you know, as YouTubers, we're all avoiding burnout. I'm gonna buy a bottle of this tonic for nervous breakdown. Two little caps uh, t twice a week and easy. I got incense galore. Always gotta be burning incense in the house. I did two lotus because I love lotus. They're beautiful and they smell delicious. Cinnamon, because I feel like cinnamon is a great incense and scent to have around during Christmas and the holidays. And then I did sandalwood, because that's my all-time favorite. And then I got some yoga oil, which I think all of us went for it, which I'm really excited to try. It's just really good for your back and your body and your muscles and all that good stuff. And then I got the herbal balm, which is minty. It's a natural tiger balm. After a couple of hours of driving, we have arrived to the city of Candy. Spelled with a K, not with a C. But pronounced like the confectionaries. It's on a lake. It's supposed to be very beautiful. It's the cultural capital of Sri Lanka. And uh, we're gonna go check out the palace, which is supposed to be very beautiful. It's a really cool artifact. Also, it's probably gonna start pissing rain in less than a minute or two, so. Okay, everybody, well, unfortunately, uh, it is starting to rain, and that's because Sri Lanka is a tropical climate. We've actually been super lucky so far with the weather, um, but the second monsoon season is uh, starting up, starting to ramp up, and this rain is like really starting to come down. So right when we walked into the Temple of the Sacred Tooth, uh, it's really started raining. Don't forget your umbrella or your rain jacket. <laughs>
So Kandy is considered the cultural capital of Sri Lanka and that's because of this right behind us. Inside this building is the Buddha's tooth and this is considered extremely holy because it's the place where all of Buddha's teachings passed touching that tooth. It's been in this place for over 300 years and it's one of the most important religious uh, pilgrimage sites in the entire country. It was the capital of the Kingdom of Kandy, which during uh, the 15th and 16th century was where the cultural and political center of Sri Lanka was as the island was invaded by colonial powers. This was the last independent kingdom of Sri Lanka. It was an independent until 1815, uh, and it was, for that reason, a very important place in all of Sri Lanka. It's also an extremely beautiful building, and you can tell that pilgrims come here from across the country to pay their homage to the Lord Buddha. So we're going to do a little bit of homage paying, a little bit of pilgrimage, and maybe, if we're lucky, snap a photo or two. exploring the temple palace complex for about an hour now. Extremely beautiful, very ornate, lots of very intricate little details. Even, you know, the wood carvings uh, on the pillars of this building, particularly impressive. This is a very beautiful part of the island. We're surrounded by these big rolling hills of jungle. And here in Kandy, there's a lake. There's all these beautiful houses around it. And this shrine is actually inside the royal palace because in order to be the king of Sri Lanka you had to be in possession of the Buddhist tooth. So the tooth is inside, we can't film it because it's encased in seven uh, like Russian dolls almost but of gold and it's on the inside. And it's just a very serene peaceful place and compared to Colombo, just night and day. Night and day. The vibe here is way more chill. The weather is quite literally more chill. The temperature is cooler, it's fresher, the air is cleaner. Um, you know, we've had this big storm roll through with thunder and lightning and torrential downpour and then it's gone and the air is fresh and clean and uh, yeah, I just think that Coming here, coming to Candy, it's been on the list and I think that now that we've experienced the temple of the tooth relic and the palace, I think it's time to head out, check out what's going on on the streets. So we have left the temple and we've come over to the lake. Candy is built around a central lake and we're gonna take a little boat ride just to get like a better feel for the city. It's very beautiful, very scenic. It's nice to be out on the water instead of on the shore. And there's a lot of bird life, Lots of little tuk-tuks whipping around, but it's rained and now it's kind of the calm after the storm and you can see why this is such a uh, desirable place to be. The temperature is cooler, it's lush, it's green, it's verdant, and it's definitely my favorite place so far that we've visited on this trip. Kind of reminds me of a cross between Thailand because of the red roofs with Hanoi because of the lake in the capital of Vietnam, but it's a very different vibe from Colombo. This is the gateway to the hill country, so tomorrow we're going to be diving into the hill country and you'll see what that means. Because of the religious importance of the temple and the palace, there's no bars or discotheques in the immediate area, so it's a very, very quiet, peaceful place. I really like it. I like that it, you have a hustle and bustle of a city, but right in the center you have a really calming, lake in between everything and it's nice to have a busy city but then be able to escape that here or at a temple and so I like that balance. completed our scenic boat ride and now we're gonna get something to eat 
food time. All right, so it's dinner time, and we're gonna try some local Sri Lankan specialties. Uh, the first dish we're gonna try is egg hoppers, which I love. Yeah, it's kind of like a rabbit and an egg. Bad joke. And we're gonna try some kotu roti, which I personally love. Uh, and are you hungry? I'm very hungry, and I've heard the street food here in Candy is great, so. Let's eat. Let's munch. Munch. First course have been served. We have egg hoppers and we have kotu roti. So the kotu roti is kind of like it's kind of like a fried rice, but instead of rice, they're using chopped up bits of roti, which is like an Indian style flatbread. And then the egg hopper is a mixture of corn and rice flour, a little bit of coconut milk, and then it's placed into this circular uh, pan bowl thing where it, it gets this really crispy uh, around the edges, and then they just chuck an egg in the middle and you go for it. I've never had uh, I've never had the egg hopper. I tried the kotu roti the other day and it was delicious. So. This is the first meal we've had in a local restaurant. And I'm very happy that we're here. Good? Mm. Ooh. Yeah, that's good. Soft. Definitely has a kick to it. Spicy. But I love spice and it's good. Dinner was delicious. We've made new friends. Thank you very much. Estuti. It was very good. Yeah. Estuti. Yeah. yeah. The roti was on point. Yeah. But uh, that is the end of our episode here in Candy. We had a super fun day exploring. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yeah, he liked it. Well, stay tuned. Tomorrow we're going to be exploring the hill country. We're going on one of the most scenic train rides in the world. It's gonna be an awesome trip, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe to Bag Brothers for more travel videos. In the meantime, stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you guys on the road. Peace. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.